In this video, I am going to be giving you an updated walkthrough of the app that I use to organize all of the areas of my life, Notion. It's been a second since I've given you a proper in-depth walkthrough of how I am using Notion to organize my thoughts, my ideas, my notes, my content, and particularly with New Year's kind of around the corner, now is a good time to start organizing your life and getting yourself set up for the new year. I'm pretty much a walking advertisement for Notion. I love it, I adore it, and I am also blessed enough to be sponsored by Notion for this video. The big reason that I love Notion is because it's all of the tools that I used to use but in one place. Pre-Notion, I felt like all of my stuff was scattered everywhere. I had a Google Excel spreadsheet for my budget. I had a content calendar over here. I had a writing app over here. And now it all sits really nicely and neatly in the one place and my life feels much more organized, simple and together. In this video, you are going to see in depth all of the stuff that I do in Notion, but I use it to manage things like my content calendar, all of my notes, my master to-do list, my goals, my projects, everything kind of sits in here. And Notion is free for personal use. So it used to cost $5 a month for Notion, but now it's completely free. You can really personalize Notion based on what you need to organize and what you need to reference often. So for me, it's things like content calendars and notes and ideas and thoughts. For you, it could be study notes, organizing your homework, assignment, calendars. It's completely up to you what your Notion looks like. Notion can help you to think, plan, write, publish, and to get more done. If you want to access Notion and create your own Notion account, you can use the link in the description down below. Also, as a side note, if you want to access a bunch of my templates, I have created the Life Map Notion Pack. It has a whole bunch of templates that I use on a regular basis that you're going to see in this video. So if you like the look of the templates that I'm walking through, you can grab them using that link. Now let's walk through what my Notion looks like. So welcome to my Notion. This is the first page that you'll see when you open up my Notion and that is my life dashboard. So I have a dashboard for all of the big aspects of my life and they kind of just house all of the important stuff related to that particular thing. This is my life dashboard so it houses all of the important things for my life. This is the stuff that I want to see on a daily or just a regular basis and remind myself of. This page contains all of the important stuff related to my routines, my goals and my to do's that I want to see on a daily or really regular basis. My philosophy with my dashboard is to make it so that it scrolls as little as possible right now it scrolls a bit more than it would if it was expanded out to its usual size but I just don't want to scroll on my life dashboard I just find that the more that I have to scroll on it the less I use the stuff under the scroll part if that makes sense so I try to keep it as small simple and minimal as possible so that I'm actually using every aspect of it because there's no point in having a life dashboard that you don't actually use in the top left hand corner there are my life map goals if you are familiar with my channel you'll know that I have my planner brand which is the life map where I focus on 13 week goals and I plan for them daily weekly and monthly I like to have them front and center in my life dashboard as well just as another reminder that they exist and they are really really important the way that it works is you pick one most important goal and two mini goals so I like to have those sitting there as a reminder of the big things that I'm focusing on right now in my life as you can see I've changed the names of some of them because we want to keep them on the down low one of the other reasons that I really like having them here is because I can click on them it's set up as a gallery and I can hit project template which is a template that I've set up in the background it'll load this beautiful project template for me I like to have this for any goals that have lots of moving parts, which a lot of my goals do. So if you have goals like create an Etsy store, launch a website, a lot of the time there are just moving parts like contacting a graphic designer or writing the copy and they all float around. So I like to house them in this little project plan so I can keep track of things that have due dates and other tasks that need to be done. This project plan is actually in my Notion pack, but I'll walk you through it really quickly. Basically, you write down your purpose, which is your main why, the closest reason why you're doing this, your principles, so what are the boundaries that you've set. This can be related to budget as well as a number of other things. Ideal outcomes, so creating a little vision for your goals, and then an anti-vision. We love an anti-vision. And then I have space to brainstorm just all of the tasks associated with that goal. Then my favorite part that I use so bloody much, which is the project plan. So I can organize that 
that by subproject, by timeline, and by status. This is actually based off David Allen's natural planning model. So there's been a few added tweaks and changes, but it is based off his model, which I have found really, really helpful when it comes to project planning for projects that have lots of things going on. I wouldn't do this for a simple project of like get my taxes together, that would just be too much. I would do it for a bigger project like launch my planner brand. I did use it for launching my planner brand. Then to the right, you have your routine. So I see routines as a semi-flexible thing. You get a new planner and you integrate that into your routine or you find a new meditation app and you decide you wanna do meditation in the mornings. So I like to have these digitally because they do change. So I've got my morning routine, which is pretty simple. Daily mindset work. I like to do one of these each day, not all of them because that's a lot. I don't always get there, but we try. Then there's the midday check-in. So clearing the inbox, reviewing my life map, posting on Instagram, if I get around to it. A midday check-in is kind of recent. It's just resetting in the middle of the day, essentially, and being like, okay, what did I plan on doing today and how am I going with that? Let's realign with my plan for the day. It usually involves revisiting my daily plan that I've done in my planner. Then I've got my daily shutdown. You guys would have seen that recently in my night routine and then my evening routine. Underneath my life map goals, there are my projects. So my projects are honestly background noise in comparison to my life map goals, and that's the way I like to keep them. Most of my projects, like replacing the office light bulb, those things aren't really important, and it won't really be that detrimental to my life if I don't get them done. They're not that impactful. In three years' time, I may not remember that I had these on my projects list. So I try to keep them as background noise and do stuff for them on my life admin days and just batch do them. Some of those are kind of important. Right now, there's not that many of them listed. I think there probably could be more if I dug for it. I probably need to update that list. Then I've got my master to-do list. So my master to-do list houses all of my to-dos that are on my mind. I love having a master to-do list because I know that anything that is on my brain, I can put in this list. It gets contextualized, it gets sorted, and eventually it gets done. So I do contextualize these just because if I didn't, it would be the biggest list. Like it would be unbelievable. So if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I use the getting things done context. So I organize by things that I wanna do at home, things that I can do when I'm on errands, things to discuss with people, things to do at my computer, um, someday perhaps, it's waiting for. It sounds like a lot, but it's really helpful to do because otherwise I'd have this huge massive list and there'd be no context associated with them. I like contextualizing it because it just breaks it down a little bit in my mind. If you're interested in how I organize all of my to-dos in my master to-do list, I would highly recommend watching my video on how to organize and declutter your mind. I will have that listed in the description below. Most of these views are pretty simple. The only one that's probably a bit fancier is my want list, which is where I have a list of all of the stuff in my life that I want. It's like my wish list, basically. What I like about it is that I've got a little life impact column so I can rate how much something would impact my life. And then I also like to state how it will improve my life just so I can see which one gets the most tags. Obviously, when you're doing this, you can be very biased. You can be like, mm, yes, getting that at home nail kit will absolutely improve my life by a 10. But after a few weeks, you can probably get a little bit more rational about it. Revisit this and make sure that things are prioritized correctly. Directly. It just stops you from making impulse purchases and makes your purchases a little bit more meaningful and more impactful. The next dashboard that I have listed at the very top because I access it quite frequently is my Michelle B dash. So in here I have my brand Bible and this is all of my brand related stuff for Michelle B. I've got things like my vision, my purpose, my brand personality traits and imagery, my core beliefs. Then I have my content creation section. First I have my video ideas list where I chuck any ideas that come to me for videos to create. I have my knowledge base. So in there, I have a tutorial on how to edit Michelle B videos, how to upload Michelle B videos. That's something that I made for when I was getting a video editor, who is actually my sister. Love you, Amy. I have course and product development. I do have a B-roll to create list and a sponsor pitch, monthly planning. There is all kinds of content related stuff and I won't dive too deeply into that because I don't know how interesting it would be. Then I have my content content schedule. Probably the most interesting thing about this is my new video template. So here I have a place to put my description tags, brainstorm a whole bunch of titles. I really like having all of this front and center
winter because it's the stuff that I really don't enjoy doing. Like I don't like writing descriptions. I really don't like writing tags. It feels very pointless. Title ideas, I'm just not interested. So I like to have this all here so that I do it before I start script writing. I used to have a really bad habit of script writing and then being like, oh, I'll do that stuff afterwards. I wouldn't do it and then I do it as soon as it was, it was uploading and it wasn't a very effective system. So then I have my thumbnail ideas at the bottom. And if you don't have Matt Diavella on your thumbnail ideas list, you're probably doing it wrong. Obviously he's not thumbnail inspiration for everyone, but I like having the pictures here to remind me to put thumbnail ideas in. Then I have my script section. So here I have space for outlining and researching. I have space to actually put together a little video script. And then I have a B-roll to create list. So this is like a linked database where I can chuck in all of my B-roll that I want to create. I can actually link it to, for example, how I organize my life in Notion. I can write what B-roll to record out of context. So is it at home or is it out and about or is it screen recording? Very vague context. Locations, this is if it's at home. That way, if I am recording a whole bunch of B-roll, I can have it listed by location and record it all in the same location, if that makes sense. And then tick off whether it's created. So this I would fill out for every video and ideally I batch my videos. So if I hop back into the Michelle B dash, I'd then just open this page and it'd have a list of B-roll to create. This is all my B-roll from my last B-roll batch shoot. And then I can get it all created in the one go. That's a bit of a new addition, but I've been loving it. Then I've got my getting things done dash. So I don't know how much I've shown you guys of this before on this channel. I know I've done a getting things done deep dive with Notion, but let me walk you through it. So first thing you're going to see on the getting things done dash is my master to-do list once again, but you're getting a bit bigger of a view. So on my life dashboard, I actually strip it down to just see the high priority stuff. That way not everything is in my face. Oh, that's not working properly. I guess I don't really use that very much here. Um, So then I've got my weekly reset in my quick reference. So weekly reset, you guys are familiar with it. It's something that I do every single week to create a clean slate. I do a little life reset, a business reset. I get clear and I get current. So I like to clear everything out, including my email inbox, my physical inbox, everything in my life. And then I get current by reviewing my to-do list, making sure that they're all up to date, reviewing my goals and my projects. This is something that I like to do on a weekly basis. It is one of those rituals that without it, I feel the pain. It's so bloody helpful. And I have a few videos on this if you're interested that I'll have linked down below as well. I recommend everyone do a weekly reset in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to look like mine, although it absolutely can if you want to get inspiration, but some kind of little sit down where you're like, okay, out with the old, in with the new, here's the plan. That is what I recommend everyone do. So then you've got your monthly and quarterly resets. These are a little less frequent. Also, wildly helpful things to have in your life. They just make sure that you do those little things that maintain your life and make your life a little bit better. Then there is growth goals and projects, which takes you to my life map goals, as well as my other projects, which you saw before. I have my trigger list and my areas of focus. My trigger list is really helpful if I'm ever doing a brain dump. I have this up and I read through it and I think of all of the things related to what I've got on my trigger list. Originally, David Allen created a trigger list. I made my own version just because a lot of the stuff I was like, mm, I don't think that's quite aligned with me. So I made my own version of it. So that's a super helpful thing to have and to access when you do your weekly reset. If you do like a weekly brain dump and get everything out of your head, having a trigger list is very, very helpful. Then I have my other someday list. So my someday lists are things that I want to do someday. And in my master to-do list, I have a whole list of things that I want to do someday. This is my other someday list. So it's got things like baby names, dog names, not having a baby, not not buying a dog anytime soon. Still unsure about the baby, but they're there and they are accessible. I've got birthday list, which is really simple, nothing crazy. I have locations for Instagram shoots. There's not very much on there, I don't think. Then I have my books to read and books completed, which is probably my favorite someday list. On this someday list, obviously, I have my nonfiction books that I want to read and my fiction books. And what I love about this is that I also have a new book template which I find really, really helpful. I like to take book notes, but for a long time, whenever I went to take them, I was like, but what do I write? Like, where do I start? And book notes, I think are wildly important because otherwise you're not really going to get anything out of a book. If you're not taking notes, you're not revisiting the stuff that you read, you're not taking action based on a book. And I'm talking about like self-growth books, like learning books, development books, all in line with what I make content about, then it's all just kind of pointless. So I have created this template 
and I dive into why am I reading this book, which is so important because sometimes we pick things up just to read it, which is totally fine. When it is a fiction book, love that. However, when it's a non-fiction book, it's like, what, what do you want to get out of it? Then it's a little book summary, copying over Kindle book highlights. And I like to do a little chapter by chapter overview as well as write down actionable takeaways because there's just no point in reading the types of books that I read unless you are taking notes and writing down things that you're going to do as a result of having read that book. The next dashboard, I've got it listed as a hub. Look, it's all the same. My content hub, this is my favorite new addition to my Notion. Very much content creator focused, so I won't dive too deep into it. Basically, a new ritual that I've started implementing within the last few months is content week. So content week is one week where I just go hard and I create as much content as I possibly can. And my content hub is my Bible for that week. In my content week, I have listed my outcomes, what I want to get done within the week. I have a section for my video creation and these are all linked databases. So this actually is a originating from my Michelle B dash, but my B-roll to create list, which we looked at before, which comes from Michelle B dash. I've got newsletter creation also comes from my Michelle B dash. And then I've got my Instagram planning. It all comes from different dashboards, essentially. I've got real planning. That's something I'm diving into soon. I'm scared, but I plan out a bunch of reels and I'm actually really excited to film them. That's for Life Map Collective though. So make sure you're following me on Life Map Collective to see me make my reels. Then I have, I've showed you that a million times. We have the Life Map Collective collective dash. So this is my dashboard for Life Map Collective, my newer brand. And this is very similar in structure to my Michelle B dash. So up the top, you've got all of my mission statement messaging values. I've got employee information. We've got the LMC knowledge base, which is an absolute beast. I created this because I've recently hired a customer service person as a contractor. So that's one of my Life Map goals. I created that to make it a little bit smoother when hiring someone because I could more easily go, okay, it's all in this knowledge base. You don't have to email everything through to me to learn how to answer these questions. Also, I really want to make sure that I have killer customer service. And by having templates, I know that people are getting the right answers and also that the tone is right. It's important to me to treat my customers like they are friends, like they are highly valued. And I really wanted to get that across. And I think in that knowledge base, I've been able to sort of set the tone for what I want emails to come across as. I've got my little welcome page for new employees. I have my bonuses, planning resources, resources. It's all happening. I also have my tracker, which I need to fill out actually for this month. So this is my monthly scorecard. So I'm getting into the practice of tracking all of my stats every month. I need to actually do it for last month. And the reason that I want to do this practice is because tracking your numbers when you are starting something is very, very helpful. It's something I actually used to do with my YouTube channel. I tracked all of my numbers every single week. I would write down all of my subscribers and all of the important like click throughs, all of that stuff just to track whether I was increasing. I think I'd write down how many subscribers I'd increased by, how many views I'd increased by, all of that stuff. And I don't think the act of writing down your numbers is necessarily helpful, but it's the act of aligning your focus and being like, okay, why did that work? And why did that not work? Why did I get so many views this week as opposed to last week? My subscriber growth isn't going up. What do I need to do about it? It just gets you thinking and it keeps your focus going. And because Life Map Collective is quite new and I do want it to expand beyond the reach of my community that I already have, even though I love my community beautiful, blessed humans, but I would love to expand it to be bigger than me. So having a numbers tracker is very important. Then I have a whole bunch of stuff that is sitting in my other section. So we've got intentional thinking. I won't actually dive into this just because it is more personal, but I have my journal in here. I have a little journaling template that I use. I have my mind maps page. So I do, I mind map like a lot on paper. And I got to the point where I was like, God, I have all of these mind maps lying around in all these notebooks, which is exactly what I got Notion to stop doing. Um, and I wanted to house them all in one place. So this is my little mind map section. And then I have focusing sessions. Focusing is a meditation technique created by someone, Eugene Gendlin, I'm going to say, um, give it a Google. It's a little bit spiritual, but I really enjoy it. And I find that it really helps me to tap into my inner voice, tap into my intuition, if you will. And I come up with a bunch of ideas. Usually when you do your, your focusing sessions, you have a notebook and you write down things as a result of it. So I have that all housed in here. All a little bit too personal to dive into, but it's there. Then I have my commonplace book. I bloody love my commonplace book. This is definitely one of my favorite pages. Ooh, I've said that a few times, but like, I love this page. So in my commonplace book, it's basically all of my little 
notes from life, from learning, all housed in the one space. Like I said before, I actually was listening to Ali Abdal and he was talking about how important it is to interact with the content that you read, like in the form of writing notes, um, writing your own interpretations of things, etc, etc. And I really, really related to that. I am such a note taker. When I hear words of wisdom, I want to write it down. I want to explore deeper into it. I want to apply it to my own life. And I guess this is my space to do that. So firstly, I've got my commonplace notes. This is just random notes that I hear usually on podcasts and also a lot of newsletter notes. I get a lot of newsletters and I like to write down notes from them. And this is where those notes would go. So I do categorize things that way. If I want to view everything around confidence and growth, I can filter on that. Um, I write down the topic so that I have a clearer idea of what that particular note is about. And then I write down what my note is, who said it, where they said it. So as you can see, it is a lot of articles, email newsletters, and a lot of podcast stuff. And I like to write down the source notes. I use a lot of these notes and all of the stuff on this particular Notion page in my YouTube videos in my email newsletters, in my Instagram captions, maybe not word for word, but a lot of inspiration comes from this particular page. Then I've got my book notes. My book notes comes from that other someday list that I was looking at before. And in my book notes, I can see all of the books that I have read and taken notes on. I can also categorize that by the same categories as the previous database. So if I want to see everything on confidence and growth, I can throughout my book notes, throughout my life notes. I've also got my quotes, which are categorized. I bloody love a quote. I just little short pieces of wisdom in the form of a quote. My absolute favorite thing. Chuck your favorite quote in the comment section down below. I want to hear it. So I really like interpreting them and making them actionable is my favorite thing. Are we shocked? Then I've got my interesting articles and videos. This is, oh, it's kind of newish, hasn't been utilized as much as it should be, but it's there. I do have a lot of articles that I have absolutely adored reading. Sometimes articles are just as valuable as a book, 100%. It's rare, but it happens. Um, and I've got my swipe file, also a little bit newer. This is a concept from Austin Cleon, Steal Like an Artist. He recommends having a swipe file of all of the stuff that has inspired you, um, usually in relation to like design. For me, I've got lots of email newsletters actually, because I I'm, I'm feel like I'm still finding my groove when it comes to emails. Um, so obviously it's not about copying, even though that's kind of the title of the book. It's just about having a lot of inspiration there that you can pull from any time that you need to. I have my, this is my reference section and it is filled with probably the most random stuff. I've just shoved everything else in my reference section. So I'll go through this. I've got my weekly marriage meeting, which I have cleared. So there's no personal stuff in it. So this is my weekly marriage meeting agenda. So I had have posted about this on Instagram. Me and Luke like to do a little weekly marriage meeting every week where we sit down and we chat about all of the important stuff. This, he was actually inspired to start doing this from a Tim Ferriss podcast. He suggested it to me and I was like, you suggested it, we are doing it. Because <laughs> that's absolutely something that I would usually suggest. So as soon as he suggested it, I was like, okay, we're doing this. So basically you kick off with appreciation. So you say everything that you can think of that you specifically liked or admired about your partner during the week. My love language is words of affirmation. I love words of affirmations. So this is my favorite section. It's actually the loveliest way to kick this off because then you lead into more boring things like chores and commitments. Me and Luke do our groceries because we both hate doing our groceries. So we sit together. We're Literally, we're doing them online, mind you. That's just the ultimate first world problem. We also talk about things like, okay, whose birthday is coming up? Are you going to get them a present? How are we organizing that? How are we getting there? What do we need to do around the house? Then we've got a date night quality time plan. Also love this section. Me and Luke didn't used to do date nights, like proper plan date nights. We'd kind of do the same thing every week. Now we're into the date nights and um, we plan where, 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 when, and what, and then problems and challenges, which I think is really, really important. It's like having this designated platform to talk about any issues that you may have with each other. I think for, we've been together for about seven years and every couple has issues. Whether you talk about your issues and you come to resolutions and you're open and honest with each other about what's going on is probably one of the biggest determining factors in how long your relationship is going to last. At least that is my opinion. 
one of the things in my vision is definitely having a thriving relationship and I think having this weekly marriage meeting is so so important as a part of that then I have my checklist you guys have seen a lot of these before we have the bounce back checklist the classic with I actually went up went to this the other day because I was feeling like absolute crap and it works every bloody time this goes back to my quote of don't wait until you feel better to do something do something to make yourself feel better i'm all about acknowledging and accepting your feelings and i think that's a really important part of processing your emotions but for me a lot of the time pretty much all of the time that i am feeling really off or blur it links back to a really critical self-care element oftentimes i don't feel like doing any of the stuff on this list like i do not want to tidy i don't really want to make myself rude i don't want to talk to people but every single time when i go through this list i feel better sometimes usually i don't even get through the whole list because by like here i'm feeling much much better about life i also have my if you're feeling overwhelmed because that's something that i have dealt with quite a lot which does involve going through my if you're feeling off checklist i have my favorite people info. I need to populate this more. I think a lot of this is still in Google Keep. So I like to write down favorite foods of people because I am quite a forgetful person. And I think it means a lot when for your birthday or for like days where you're feeling down, people buy you like a coffee or your favorite pie from the store. It's just a really nice thing to do. And I want to be a person who does that kind of thing. So I like to document the stuff that people really, really like in life so that I can make sure that I am being a good friend. I have a product manual section. This I actually think I will probably move back to keep. I moved it into Notion because I really wanted Notion to house everything. And then I realized it is a bit easier to keep it in keep. So nice thought. And I think it's a good thing to have a place for your product manuals, but I don't know if this is the best place for it. I skipped over a lot of those just because some of them are very boring and uninteresting, but you get the gist. My reference is really just like a mishmash of all of the things. A lot of these templates are in my life map notion pack, which I'm going to have linked in the description down below. So if you do want to get these without having to manually create them in depth yourself, because some of them are kind of complex, you can grab them in the description below. If you liked this video, you're probably going to like all of my other Notion content and I have created quite a bit. I'm going to have a playlist of all my Notion videos on the screen that you can click on and watch through. I give more in-depth detail on my getting things done system because that is way more in-depth than I talked about in this video, as well as a bunch of other little bits and pieces. So I'm going to have that playlist on the screen. I appreciate you so very much and I will see you soon.